welcome to another episode of Homework Workouts. For today's workout, you do not need a bike. Hi. It is time to get ready for the warm up. The warm up is gonna be very tough for the core. We're gonna work the obliques. We're gonna work rotation and anti rotation at the same time with two beautiful movements for very high repetitions. We're gonna have Edward and Sonny here to demo for you guys. We're gonna start off with a classic floor wipe and then we add some cross mountain climbers in there. So let's have a look at the two. Laying on the floor at home, if you wanna practice with us right away, you go for it. You start with the arms spread to the side, lack in front of you, you lift up the lats, and we start by moving as close to the floor as possible, reach toward the right hand, and then slowly move all the way back to the left hand, and then we go back to the right hand. And then we consider that to be one repetition. Throughout the movement, you wanna keep your back in the floor, and you can either pinch your shoulders off the floor or keep them in the floor, as long as your legs stay as close to the floor as possible. Now what Sun is going to do is show you how to scale this. You can do this by bending your knees and still aiming to keep your feet as close to the floor as possible because the more range of motion you make with the legs away from the middle, so away from the core, the harder the exercise will become and the idea is not to do 10 easy reps but to challenge yourself. Great job guys. Let's move on to our second movement of this general warm-up. Let's call it the ab warm up here, which is the cross mountain climb. You position yourself in a regular plank on long arms with the feet next to each other. And we're gonna start off with lifting up the right leg. And instead of going straight forward, you're gonna go across towards the right arm. And then you move with the opposite leg to the opposite arm as well. So think of initiating like a regular mountain climber, but while your knee is coming forward, you're going to make that rotation. Scaling this in level would simply be going less far with the rotational component, but I just want you to challenge yourself here and keep your hips in line with the shoulder throughout the movement. If it says 20 reps, that means 20 reps alternating, so 20 repetitions in total. If you're one of the people that likes to count reps per leg, in that case it is 10. We just showed you the two beautiful warm-up movements. Now it's time to get to the work. I need you guys to get off the couch and join us for this five minute quality M rep where we're going to do 10 of those floor wipes followed by 20 of the cross mountain climbers. Now the idea is not to do as many of those reps and rounds as possible, but try to get as much quality work in as you possibly can. Rest if you need to and go for very difficult skills that are going to challenge you. Now, Edward and Sana are gonna start right with you guys. So I'm gonna set my timer. We're gonna start off with 10 floor wipes in three, two, one, let's go. So at home, whatever pace you're picking, you want to go with something where you think you're actually going to need a break somewhere at least during the 10 floor wipes, right? If you feel your legs are getting off the floor more and more over the course of the repetitions, then take a smart break, for example, at 5 reps or at 6 reps, and then finish the rest with the same difficulty of the skill. This looks very good. I like how Edward is looking towards his feet, so at home it might help you to know that you're still very close to the floor by looking at your feet. Sana's using that skilled option here, but she's still going to make it very hard by keeping her feet as close to the floor as possible. You don't want to get those knees to go in front of the hip in the middle portion. You want to make sure that they stay away from the middle as far as you possibly can. And again, braking is always allowed in this quality type of warm-up. The thing with the 10 repetitions is if you go to the left arm first, if you reach the left arm for the second time, only then it's one rep. So it's not... One, two, it is all the way out, all the way back, and then you make one repetition. Very good. So I think they're finishing up their last rep here, and then they move on to the cross mountain climber. It's beautifully done, guys. So 20 alternating repetitions of the cross mountain climber, <clears throat> starting off with one leg, moving it to the opposite arm. And instead of just pulling it, I really want you to work rotation from the middle. Very nice. So the obliques will start to burn a bit. This one is way easier than the floor wipe. That's why I specifically put it right after this one. But the line I just said does not make sense at all because after the mountain climbers we'll go back to the floor wipes since we're doing this quality M rep. Now they're way over a minute in, so probably this will turn into just doing two good rounds in here. If you're barely finishing your second round and you have a couple of seconds left on the clock and you actually want to finish those last couple of cross mountain climbers, you just go for it. Right? Okay, so they just finished up one round. It is a five minute quality MREP. I need you guys to continue on your own speed and you can always squeeze it in another minute. Good luck. Press pause. Okay, so for our second portion today, we're going to sit 
on a couch or use the wall because the only thing that we will do is the couch stretch for 60 seconds per side for two rounds with 15 seconds of rest in between. I have Edward here chilling on a chair, Sonny here chilling against the wall and now we're gonna get them into the couch stretch at home. You're going to join us right away so get off the couch and do exactly the following while looking at the two here either the wall or the couch, whatever you want to use. So you're going to place your foot either against the wall or on top of the couch with your knee underneath your hip. That is ideal. The other foot is just to lean on. Now while we're sitting here, the idea is to stay upright and start leaning forward. You can make this an active stretch by squeezing your butt every five to 10 seconds quickly for three to four seconds, hold it firmly and lean back into it and keep doing that back and forth or just passively hang forward. At home as well, we're gonna now start. So in 10 seconds, we start our full minute of the couch stretch. Great way of opening up the hip flexors. And we're on. So we're opening up the hip flexors here because we're doing jumping lunges today. And we did some ab work before and some people really lit up with the hip flexor when they do ab work during a warm up. So we try to get those nice and, uh, nice and flexible before starting. Also open up the quad a bit if that's nice and tight from the last couple of days that we had of, uh, of homework workouts. Yep, yep. Keep that knee on top of the ankle, ideally on the front foot, and make sure it's anchored into the heel instead of into the toe, and just try to chill out in here. If you wanna do a stretch after today's session, you can do exactly the same one, but then instead of doing active movement just passively hang in there for a good two to three minutes on one side and just breathe through the movement we got how long is 15 seconds left before having 15 seconds to transition to the other lap 10 more seconds and we'll get back to this leg again in round number three and three two one switch so that was our right leg we now move on to the left leg and then we do another round on each so good luck and stay mobile. For today's workout portion, I will get to the setup and interval timer in a second. Let's first have a look at the three movements that you need to be able to do today. Also including scaling options for different levels and obviously also considering living in an apartment building or having a certain injury, which for example, does not allow you to jump. Now, the first movement in the workout will be alternating jumping lunges. So I'm going to have both Edward and Sonna demonstrate jumping lunges. Whatever leg you want to start forward with, I'm okay with both. Let's get just uh, six reps in here, guys. Let's go. So while they're going here, they try to stay as upright as possible. Gently go to the floor with the back knee, jump, switch legs. If you don't want to touch the floor and stay slightly above, I'm game with that as well. Now first, let's have a look at how to scale this if just the movement itself is too hard. Instead of going straight to regular lunges, I would like to keep the jumping element in there because that is very intense. So let's just look at the jumping squat as a good way of substituting the movement. Staying as upright as possible, catching in a squat and just extending all the way up being off the floor. I don't care how high, you just do it. Great. Now, if you have that apartment building with levels so you can't make all the jumping noise or you have a knee injury that's not helping you with the catching the jump for example we go for regular back step lunge so you just step back into the lunge we're still having the the quads the glutes and the hamstring do a lot of work here it's a little bit less intense it's still a, still a great workout now if you have an injury that's not allowing you to do all that knee flexors all that bending of the knee in that case you will go on the floor on your back we're going to do a one-legged glute bridge but then instead of doing 12 we do six reps on one side and six on the other when you set yourself up, make sure there's more pressure in the heel than in the toe of the foot being on the floor and that you keep your pelvic tilted forward, which literally means fold your hip around your belly button when you squeeze up and keep it like that when you lower down. Thank you, son. Now, our second movement here, and you can stay on the floor, <laughs> is going to be the V-up. For the V-up, we'll set ourselves up in a hollow body position. So we start up in a hollow and it's all about finding the rhythm. You guys can start and try to find your rhythm here. You try to literally meet yourself in the middle. So it's arms and legs coming together in the middle position and being as connected as possible. That is all good, Ed. So now let's say that the movement itself is easy or let's say that the movement itself is very hard. In that second case, I want you to go for a tuck up. Not only, let's say you can actually meet in the middle, but you need a rep and rest and a rep and rest. I want you to keep moving today. It's very short and intense interval work. So then I'd rather have you go for tuck ups, which is a bit easier on the rhythm. Let's show you the tuck ups, Sana. Same position in the start, 
get in together, but then tug the lax, go back out, and I'll make it a fast movement. Boom, back out. Good. So this is way faster than being than struggling around with the V-ups. Once you, uh, you feel like you're going to fail or you're going to miss reps or you're going to have to rest, I want you to switch to the tuck up right away and aim for intensity over the repetition level here, which is a weird line, but you guys know what I'm saying. Now, our third movement will be the tuck jump. So let's have a look at the tuck jump here. We're going to start standing very upright with the feet right underneath the hips. We're going to jump, pull the legs up and forward. Let's go, guys. Give me three reps. Boom. Land. Go again. Good. And rest. Now, if you would play this in slow-mo, and Kevin will play this in slow-mo as well when I'm talking right now, the idea is to see that the knees come up forward and the hip bending instead of the legs coming up backwards like you, you don't want to kick yourself in the butt with the heels now you want to lift up the knees up and forward if you cannot jump because of all such reasons i don't want you to do mountain climbers today because we did those in the warm-up i want you to do a fast variation of alternating standing knee lifts which i'm just going to demonstrate you boom one two and then you do just four reps of that three four and then you go right back into probably no jumping lunges as well, into jump squats or lunges or whatever scaling option you chose to do. In order to set your timer correctly, you can use the SmartWatt app for that. You want to use the uh, interval timer there, the Tabata timer it actually is called, and you want to set it for five rounds, so five sets of three minutes on and one minute off. And you only have one goal today, and that is going very, very hard for three minutes. Choose options you can easily do and keep pushing, pushing, pushing for three minutes before taking that one minute break. I have the luxury to, to use the roll clock, which is very easy to set, and it is set at three minutes right now. I'm going to have Edward and Sonny here, and I'm going to have you guys join in as well on the fun. So we're all going to start off together with this one. The rep scheme was 12 alternating jumping lunges. It was six V-ups, and then it was three tuck jumps. We start all together in 10 seconds. At home, I need you guys to be ready. Stand up and start with us here in three, two, one. Let's go. So 12 reps of the alternating jumping lunge. Upon completion of the last rep, you go down immediately and start on the six beautifully done V-ups. I like that they're both making height as well here in the jumping lunge. That is just adding a level of difficulty there. Good. Right into the floor, right into the V-up. And it's going for the V-up. Sun is getting down towards the tuck up. And like again, if you're missing the, in the rhythm, just bend the legs a bit. That is all good. Nothing wrong with that. Right into the three tuck jumps. There we go. Boom. Upon completion, they move into their next round. And you saw, right, that round only took like 30 to 35 seconds. So it's going to be a very spicy three minutes. You guys keep going and press pause. 